Hello, I'm Jessica Gordon with the City of Boston Watershed Protection Department. Today, we're going to see how different kinds of ground cover affect how much water runs off the surface or soaks into the ground. Let's start with this concrete. This concrete represents a hard surface, like a driveway or a parking lot. What kind of pollution might we find on that kind of surface? We're going to use red food coloring to represent oil and other pollutants that might be on driveways or parking lots. Now we're going to rain on the model. The water that's coming out of this top spout represents water that runs off the surface and goes to our creeks or river. The water in the bottom spout represents how much water soaks down into the ground. As you can see, almost all of the water has run off the surface. This can lead to flooding problems. Now we're going to look at the soil. This could represent a construction site or an area of bare land. So what kind of pollution could be on a construction site? We're going to use the red food coloring again to represent motor oil and litter and other things that could be on the site. Now let's rain on the model to see what happens. As you can see, most of the water ran off the surface. This can vary depending on what kind of soil you have, but ours is very rich in clay, so only a little of it was able to soak in. We also had a lot of erosion. And this model represents a lawn with turf grass. We're gonna add food coloring to show different kinds of chemicals that people might put in their yards, such as herbicide to kill the weeds, or fertilizer to help the plant grow, or pesticides to kill the bugs. Now let's rain on the models. You'll notice it has some runoff, but it's slower than the other runoff. And now, some of the water that is soaked in is starting to come out of the bottom spout. As you can see, a lot of the water did soak into the ground, but we also still had some runoff, and all of that pollution that was on the land ended up in the water. The last model we're gonna talk about today is a rain garden. We have a rain collection cistern, rocks, and native and well-adapted plants that don't need chemicals, so we're not gonna add any pollution to this model. It's time to rain. As you can see, we hardly had any runoff. Rain gardens are great at absorbing the water and helping it filter slowly through the plants and the roots, taking out any pollutants. We didn't add any pollutants to this model, but if we had, the water would still be cleaner than the others. We also have the rain cistern here that has collected water. As our results show, the turf grass, soil, and concrete had the most runoff, which can have a negative impact on flooding, erosion, and water pollution. As our results show, the rain garden absorbed and filtered the most water, which helps reduce flooding, erosion, and water pollution in the area. Rain gardens can also be an effective way to solve drainage problems on some properties. If you'd like more information about how to run this activity or how to build these models, check out the link in the description below. Thanks for all that you do to help protect water in your community.